Hey everyone, my name is Dewan Robinson and today I'm going to talk about what it felt like to leave for Peace Corps. When Peace Corps volunteers receive their acceptance letter with their country assignment along with their country brochure and their expected date of departure, there's a lot of emotions running through their head. They're going to feel frustrated, happy, excited, sad, and anxious at the same time. For me, I definitely felt all those emotions and a lot more. Probably the biggest emotion that I felt right off the bat was frustration. See, Guinea was not my first choice, not my second choice, nor was it even my third choice. And it wasn't even close to where I had wanted to be assigned. I had asked Peace Corps to assign me to a site in uh, South America where I could perfect my Spanish. I had taken four years of Spanish classes. I wanted to become fluent in Spanish really, really badly. And they said, well, since you learn so much Spanish, that probably means you could learn French really easily. So they assigned me to Guinea. And at that time, you either said yes, or you would never become a Peace Corps volunteer. And I shouldn't have to tell you that I definitely said yes. After I finally said yes to myself, uh, there was quite a bit of anxiety because I had just a short time period to say yes officially and to get all my documents in order. At the same time, I also had to say no to a lot of different things. See, at the time, I was already accepted to uh, two graduate programs at the University of Southern California, um, one for engineering and one for education. And both those came with a resident advisor position at the university, which meant my housing would have been covered. There would have been quite a few internships offered for me, and I felt like there would have been um, a lot of job opportunities that went along with both those tracks. It was really tough saying no to both of those programs because I knew the people that recruited me personally. Um, I knew the people I would have been working with, people I would have been studying with, and I felt that, that I was kind of hurting their feelings a little bit. But I also knew that Peace Corps was something that I had wanted to do and I'd wanted to do it for a long time. What came next was a little bit of comedy. Um, I'm from a small town in California. Very few people go on to college universities and very few people even go on to Peace Corps. So there weren't a lot of people that knew what it was. Um, when I first started telling people, they would say things like, oh, so you're gonna be a missionary. Or, oh, you're going on some you know, cross-country hike or something like that. And I had to constantly keep saying no. I had to constantly keep saying, like, this is what I think I'm going to do because I actually still didn't know what I was definitely going to do. Um, but I had to say I wasn't going to be a missionary. I wasn't going on an extended camping trip. But uh, sure, I was buying a hammock, a mosquito net, a cowboy hat, um, 15 bottles of anti-mosquito spray and what have you. So I could see how some people could get really confused. The next thing that I felt after I had purchased everything that I needed, I had gotten my passport, was just fear. So when I started looking up Guinea and what type of country it was, I noticed that it was a very religious country with over 90% of the population practicing either Islam or Christianity. And for someone who is a member of the LGBTQ community, there's a lot of fear when you start talking about uh, religion. Because we know the history of discrimination. We know um, what's happened in other countries. I knew that by not being heterosexual that I could have been faced with uh, being targeted, being harassed, abused, ostracized, imprisoned, and even worse, just based on the laws of Guinea and other countries in their region. And even during my application process, the recruiters and other Peace Corps officials had basically said point blank, uh, never disclose your sexuality and never sacrifice your personal security for your integrity. So it was basically a way of saying that I shouldn't be honest with others, try and steer the conversation in different directions in order to keep that part of me a secret and to keep myself safe. 
that actually made me more scared because I he started thinking about all the ways things could go wrong. Um, maybe I would look at someone the wrong way, maybe I would talk the wrong way, or maybe someone would just type into Google my name and find out where I had been in all these gay places around uh, Los Angeles. And that was really frightening. Um, that was part of the reason why I almost considered saying no to Guinea. I was like, well, this is going to be maybe a dangerous spot for me. What comforted me, though, was that Peace Corps has been around for decades with over 200,000 volunteers. And in those 200,000 volunteers, there had been other volunteers who had been gay, bisexual, uh, lesbian, transgendered, or queer. And they had served two years without problems. I'm sure there were some instances, but there were some for heterosexual people as well. Um, but that fact comforted me that knowing that perhaps thousands of other volunteers in my position had already served. So that was a way of kind of reducing some of my own anxieties and fears. A sad moment was probably leaving my hometown, you know, having to give my mom, my dad a hug um, and wondering when I would see them again or what changes would happen. My sister had just had a baby. Uh, she was pregnant with another one. Um, my brother was looking to start his family or, or grow his family rather. And I didn't know when I'd be back. Uh, my parents didn't even drop me off at the airport. They dropped me off at a friend's house. So that kind of was a weird moment because I still had time to kind of perhaps call them and say, hey, I don't want to do this or you can come pick me up. Um, luckily, my friends were really excited for me. They were saying like, oh, this is going to be great. You're going to have so many different experiences. Uh, they were jealous. And so they were kind of pushing me, encouraging me to just keep going with it. And so I did. I got on that flight, uh, flew to Philadelphia where that was my staging site my um to depart for guinea i met up with some other volunteers who actually had quite a few of the same anxieties as myself and were super excited about what opportunities there were it was kind of like a mystery like we were coming back to guinea which had been a suspended program we were going to be the first group of volunteers we didn't really know what was going to happen but we all knew that we wanted to do that we wanted to make a difference we wanted to work we wanted to be peace corps volunteers and to further encourage ourselves we actually ran up the steps of uh from the rocky movie the rocky steps and you know we all cheered at the end uh just like rocky did and we're like okay guys we're going to do this we're going to become peace corps volunteers we're going to make it through our two years uh we're not going to give up we're going to support each other just a lot of encouragement that was warmly welcomed by everyone. Then we flew from New York City to Belgium to Guinea and that's when we started to realize like this is what it is. This is what Guinea is and this is what we're going to experience. I'll talk about that in my next video. Okay guys, thanks for listening and have a great day. Bye.